I recently received a friend request that reminded me of this story, so I'm going to share it here. This happened after I went to university, when I was 18. I made an effort to make friends after I moved onto campus, and ended up with a few friends to hang out with, including a new girlfriend, and plenty of people from my classes that I liked well enough. There was one class before lunch where it was traditional for people to go to the cafeteria afterwards to eat in pairs or in threes. I wasn't very discerning about who I'd have lunch with, because I got on fine with most people from the class, and we were all trying to make an effort to be social. So when one girl, Lily, asked if I wanted to eat lunch together after that class, I didn't have any reason not to go. We mostly talked about school and other random life things. Nothing noteworthy, but she did ask me to get lunch with her again the next week. It became a pattern, and there wasn't exactly a way to start saying no suddenly. It was fine, but it did mean I lost the chance to eat lunch with anyone else on those days. In hindsight, I suppose that was the point. One day in class, I asked someone if I could add them on social media. This happened in front of Lily. I saw her face jerk towards me from a couple of seats over. It was such a sharp reaction that it was hard to ignore, and I still remember it. By the time I got home later that day, Lily had sent me a friend request. No friends in common. I don't know how she knew my last name. I was a bit surprised, but I guess she just dug through the university's social media pages and found me through there. It gave me a bad feeling, but surely it was fine. She ended up messaging me a lot, and commenting on anything I posted. I told myself that she was just awkward and we became friends, if not close. I'd known worse people. She still always got me to go eat lunch with her after our one shared class. Other than that, we rarely spent time together in person. I saw her around sometimes, but I never went out of my way to hang out with her. So it was mostly online messaging and seeing each other in group settings. Coincidentally, my girlfriend was also named Lily. This was something that clearly bothered Lily, not my girlfriend, who couldn't have found it less interesting. It's a common name. She occasionally hinted that she wanted my girlfriend to, quote, pick a different name, or joked about her not suiting it. She clearly didn't like my girlfriend at all, and I had an idea of why. It was hard to ignore by this point. Lily was starting to unsettling hint that she had a crush on me. I tried not to address it, because what was I going to say? I'd never known what to do when a friend makes a pass at me. I was also not interested in the least. Even ignoring the weird stuff she pulled, Lily was not my type at all. She tended to dress and act in a way somewhere between a 50s housewife and one of those adults who is still obsessed with Disney princesses, if you can picture that. Things took an uncomfortable turn on the day of our last shared class of the year. Instead of asking me to lunch like she usually did, Lily asked if I'd go for a walk with her. Again. I didn't exactly know how to refuse, so I said all right. Our campus was bordered by a large patch of woodland. Lily led me into the woods and the sounds of our fellow students slowly faded away. She sat down on a log and I joined her. She started talking about how she was going to miss me over the summer. I tried placating her, but I didn't want to be there, especially because she seemed almost on the verge of tears. I think I tried to make an excuse about having plans with my girlfriend, but before I could leave, Lily chose to kiss me without warning. It was uncomfortable, to say the least. I got out of there, and I was happy to think I wouldn't see her for a while. I returned to university after the summer, moving into a house with my friends. Without going off topic, there were some serious issues in my friend group. A lot of petty arguing, and worse. I broke up with my girlfriend around the start of that school year as well, and basically the whole mess made me recontextualize things with Lily because it suddenly didn't seem as bad. That said, I didn't want to be alone with her. We mostly talked online. She was still constantly messaging me after all. One upside of everything was that I started dating a boy. Lily was not pleased to hear that news. I think she hoped to sneak in after I broke up with my girlfriend. But as I said before, 
That was never going to happen. There wasn't a big gap between my breakup and this new relationship, so she must have thought she missed her chance to be with me. This is where the story gets bad. At this time, I was fairly active on Tumblr. I occasionally talked about my life, and mostly reblogged photos and stuff. I was on there one day when something odd happened. One of the blogs I followed had received an ask with some phrases I recognized. It took a second to register that it was taken from my about page. That made me freeze. I read the message properly. Someone was asking this completely random person to analyze a section of text from my page, asking for their opinion on the type of person who would write it. I cannot stress how messed up it was to see people talking about me like I was a character in a book they were trying to study. The reply was basically, quote, I don't know, sorry. But the important thing was that the question hadn't been anonymous. It linked to someone's blog. Obviously, I wanted to know who had taken such a bizarre interest in me. As far as I knew, no one in real life, other than my boyfriend, knew about my page. Well, no surprises for guessing who was behind it. What I found was like a shrine. She was using a fake name, but I recognized Lily all over that thing. It was this cutesy pink and red page. There were a few posts about her interests, but most of the content was focused on her primary interest, me. Most of the posts were about me. There were accounts of things I'd done recently, like when I went to a nightclub, as well as references to things from as far back as I'd known her. It was clear she had been keeping tabs on me, both online and offline, gathering up every scrap of information she could about my life and hoarding it here in her collection. She talked about us eating lunch together and how special our dates had been to her, as if it was anything more than acquaintances getting food after class. She talked about the time she had forcibly kissed me in the woods, but she wrote it as if it had been mutual. She quoted lyrics from my favorite song and talked about how she'd always be there for me, no matter who else came into my life. Lots of references to loving me, quote, just the way he is. Which answered another mystery about an anonymous love letter I'd received earlier that year with the same wording. It got worse. There were a lot of posts about my boyfriend as well. These weren't so nice. They got vicious, talking about how he didn't deserve me. He didn't know what he had. If she was with me, she'd be jealous of anyone who came near me, so my boyfriend not being a jealous person meant he didn't love me. It was angry and hateful. I didn't like to think about the sort of person who could write so obsessively being fixated on me. One thing that didn't make sense at first was that the blog also made plenty of references to Lily's, quote, best friend, Stephen. She had never mentioned this person to me. Her posts talked a lot about Stephen and how great a friend he was, and how much fun they had together, how he looked out for her, etc. I was trying to work out whether this was an online friend, when one specific post made it all click. She had posted a photo and captioned it with, quote, Stephen sent this to me. He knew I would like it, and I love it, or something like that. The problem was, the photo was taken from my own page. I hadn't sent it to her. She took it from my page and then claimed this fictional best friend of hers shared it with her, because in her head, she'd split me into two people. In her messed up fantasy life, I was both the perfect best friend who was always looking out for her, and her soulmate who was bound to end up with her when I finally got over my sweet, kind boyfriend and all the other easy girls I hung out with that she made dozens of posts complaining about. Who was she complaining to? Oh, Lily had an audience. She asked open questions about me and her quote relationship with me and got messages back from her followers. People who took what she said at face value. I saw a bunch of random people agreeing with a stalker that my boyfriend didn't deserve me and we were bound to break up soon so I could be with Lily, the person I was clearly supposed to be with. She had this fake, fan fiction version of my life up for anyone to share their opinion on, 
and she'd made herself out to be the hero of it all. I went maybe a month back into this page's history. I did not look at everything that was there. It was too much. So I'm not sure how long this had been going on. I sent Lily a message confronting her about the blog. She said nothing, and I cannot stress how weird it was to have found pages and pages dedicated to me, with her talking about how she was in love with me, and would make sure we ended up together, slamming my boyfriend, and building a fantasy life with two different versions of me in it that she clearly believed to be real, then acting like it hadn't happened. She said nothing. She didn't address it. She just changed the subject, even after I pushed, and it was like she hadn't even registered what I said. I've never seen anything like it. She deleted the page, of course, or at least changed the name and hid it so I never found it again. It wasn't the end, though. I wasn't going to hang out with her anymore, but we were still shoved together in classes and she had started to actually scare me with what she might do next. I'm kind of a paranoid person. Knowing someone was obsessively keeping track of me for who knows how long freaked me out. The next thing she pulled was trying to seduce my boyfriend. It was an absolutely useless attempt that only made him uncomfortable. He told me about it right away. What was her plan there? Did she hope to tell me he cheated and waited for me to break up with him? Why would I want her after that? When that didn't work out for her, she tried hitting on three of my other friends. None of them took the bait. She ended up dating one of my former housemates for a while, but made sure to send me messages while they were together, letting me know she'd rather be with me. No thanks. Lily made sure to stay in my life the whole time I was at university. There was a time when I tried to pull away from her, and she ended up starting rumors about me and damaging a career opportunity I'd put a lot of work into. I don't know what else she did behind my back, but it made me realize it was safer to let her think she was part of my life while ignoring her, rather than doing something that would cause her to get angry. After I graduated, Lily still wanted to spend time together, but I knew I didn't have to now. I made excuses about work and barely talked to her after that point. I almost entirely stopped posting on social media that I knew she knew about. Of course. She didn't give up that easily. She tried to start conversations, asked me to meet up with her, attempts I usually ignored. I didn't like to think she was still tracking me online, but she probably was. I don't know how, but she'd occasionally reference things I mentioned online somewhere, somewhere she shouldn't have known about. The last time we had a real conversation, she sent me a message out of nowhere. We hadn't spoke at all in months, and we hadn't talked about anything serious in much longer than that. Thinking about that conversation still makes my skin crawl, but I'll summarize what happened. At first, she asked me some questions about how long had I known I was queer. I told her some basic stuff, the kind of thing I'd tell anyone who asked. Then she changed the subject. She started talking about how it would feel about her if she was a boy about wanting to be a boy for me. The messages quickly became fetishistic. She went into plenty of detail about fantasies she had of the two of us. Again, we were not friends at this point. We'd never been especially close, at least not from my perspective, and we had barely spoken for years. I can't imagine sending messages like that to even a close friend, let alone someone who barely knows you. I tried telling her not to pull this crap with me, but she decided to change tactics. She sent photos of herself, followed by a bunch of messages, maybe four or five a minute, way too fast for me to reply before the next one arrived, basically quoting back what I told her about myself and my past earlier. She was telling me these things as if they had happened to her. She was role-playing as me. The worst part was that she seemed to believe it was real that those things actually had happened to her, even when she was quoting me word for word. Things I'd told her only hours before were now her life. It was like she was trying to absorb my history, to take it over, to make my life part of her. 
yeah, I didn't talk to her again after that. I ignored future attempts she made to talk to me, and I eventually silently deleted her from the inactive social media which was her only real way of contacting me. I really thought she might finally move on. A few days ago, she sent me a friend request. It's sitting there, unanswered, because I know if I delete it, she'll only send another one. Lily and I met nearly 12 years ago. This story is just the highlights, and even then, it's only the stuff I know about for sure. A lot of stuff happened behind my back. I know it did. So, girl who spent 12 years obsessing over me, fetishizing me, stalking me, and harassing me, let's not meet again. The fantasy life you built for the two of us in your head is the only place you'll be seeing me anytime soon.